Good morning, everyone. I have a great adventure planned for you today. I am at Olana, the home of Frederick Irwin Church, one of the most famous painters in American history. I have a hiking partner with me today. Hey, everyone. everyone. Danielle this is here. Danielle. We're going to walk around the grounds here, but the real star of the show is this beautiful house, an amalgamation of all the different styles that Church encountered on his many travels throughout the Middle East and Europe. We're gonna walk inside. We're gonna go down and see Thomas Cole's house, which is right across the river. And then we might even shoot a waterfall today. Woo! But first, let's do a walk around this beautiful grounds overlooking the Hudson River Valley. So Frederick Church, aside from being a gifted architect and painter, was born into a wealthy family. He bought this property overlooking the Hudson River in 1863 and added to it continuously over the next 20 years. He also had this network of beautiful carriage roads laid down along the property, connecting different points of interest along it, laden with this red shale that was quarried on the property itself. And he had white donkeys imported from- Syria. From Syria that he rode around on these carriage roads. He also actually quarried all the stone used in the house itself. As to why the house was called Olana, it was given that name by his wife, Isabel. She saw it written in a very old textbook, written in the time of Julius Caesar. Apparently there was a property called Olani somewhere in Italy. She liked it so much she adopted the name. The landscape here is just gorgeous. <laughs> yeah, the property here is just gorgeous. You can see four states from here, the east and the west. There's also a lake on the property, or a bog, I should say, that Church himself dug over the course of 15 years. We're about to go into the house, but before we do, you'll see this garden that wraps around the stone wall right here. Isabel Church actually maintained this garden herself. Every room inside Olana is a work of art. Church was an avid traveler and collector, picking up artifacts and decor styles everywhere he went. Every room in this house could be a museum. Point out, you walk in through the front door and you could see right through to the Catskills. Art is also evident everywhere in his house. Church inherited a great deal of artwork upon his father's death, which he displayed here, but his personal love was obviously landscapes. Most of the landscapes here are his own, and Church even sometimes bought back his own work when he saw them going up for auction. But the primary draw of Olana is of course the property itself. The towers, porches, and windows of nearly every room in this house offer spectacular views of the valleys below. Church also maintained a studio in Manhattan, but Olana was his primary residence until he died in 1900, less than a year after his beloved wife. The house stayed in the family until the 1960s, when a collective of patrons rallied to pool their money and preserve it from auction. It's been a museum ever since. Olana was amazing, but the most famous painter of the Hudson River School, Thomas Cole, his house is right across the river. There's actually a trail that takes us there called the Hudson River Skywalk. We can walk right from Olana to his house over this beautiful Rip Van Winkle Bridge. Cedar Grove is the house that Thomas Cole lived in from the 1830s until his death in 1848. He was actually an immigrant from England. He was not American, even though he became probably one of America's most famous painters by the time he died. They have at his property a studio here that has some of his most famous works, including the Oxbow, looking down on the Connecticut River in Northampton, Massachusetts. A scene from Last of the Mohicans, James Fenimore Cooper was actually a personal friend of Thomas Cole. And they have his possibly most famous work, or at least my favorite, Catterskill Falls from Inside the Falls. A work so famous, I actually took the same photograph when I first went to Catterskill Fall. A day honoring my two favorite landscape painters of all time wouldn't be complete without coming to Catterskill Falls. 
It was actually a painting of Catterskill Falls taken by Thomas Cole from inside the waterfall that inspired me to come here with my camera about 10 years ago. One thing Thomas Cole and Frederick Church wouldn't have had to deal with is hordes and hordes of people at Catterskill Falls. Luckily, there's an escarpment trail that rings all the way around the mountain with lots of ledges like this one, beautiful views. I, I'm gonna spend the rest of the day just doing this hike, shoot whatever I can and show you the beautiful Catskills. This trail along the escarpment literally takes you along the cliff's edge. It's several hundred feet drop right below on the right. There's a lot of names engraved here dating back over a hundred years. There's a lot of history to this trail. Up ahead is an outcropping called the Palinville Overlook. Pretty dramatic. I'm at the site of the former Catskill Mountain House, a hotel that stood here overlooking the Hudson River Valley from 1824 until the 1960s when it was burned down. It actually fell out of popularity during the 1900s and eventually was abandoned. This was a spectacular place both Frederick Church and Thomas Cole, whose houses I saw earlier today, painted the views from here and painted the house. It's sad that it's gone, but this ledge is very easily accessible from North South Lake, the same trail that takes you to Catterskill Falls and all the ledges. We passed by some epic ledges on the way up tonight, one called Artist Rock, great for a sunrise, but where I am right now is called Sunset Rock, and that's exactly what I'm here to shoot. That is North South Lake right here. I'm gonna do a time lapse. The clouds are looking mm, spectacular. Chef's kiss. I hope to get some great light. All right, I'm gonna set up shop. Yeah, the Catskill Mountains are what inspired Thomas Cole to give up the city life and become an artist. And Thomas Cole is who ex inspired Frederick Church to take up painting and paint landscapes, and Frederick Church is who inspired me to become a landscape photographer. And photography is what inspired me to go into video editing. Today's video was like a whole big circle of inspiration, and it was such a joy for me to film this. I've been wanting to do this for a long time. Yeah, the Catskills are beautiful, but comparing Thomas Cole's house to Olana, Frederick Church's house, Felt like comparing the Alamo to the Sagrada Familia. It was really a juxtaposition. I'm sure Cole's house was considered a mansion in its day, but you could see the studio in it. It was obviously very utilitarian. In Church's house, the studio was on the third floor and the tour wouldn't actually take us there. I thought that was rather interesting. I think in Thomas Cole's house, the subject of the house is Cole himself. Whereas in Olana and the church estate, the subject was just the house and the architecture, which is fine. Church reminds me a lot of me. My old apartment was also just riddled in artifacts and collections and yada, 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 just filled to the wazoo. I actually love that style a lot. Anyway, guys, I really enjoyed today's hike. What a beautiful time in the Catskills. If you enjoyed it as well, just hit that like button below. It helps me out big time. I'm a van dweller. I live in my van. I talk about it often. I explore New England all the time, the Northeast in general. So subscribe if you want to follow along. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.